Micah, for taking the time to talk with us today at The Christian Beat about some of your recent book and tour and other news that I'm sure you're all excited about. So <laughs> we've, we've got a lot to cover. I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to I'll start with the uh, upcoming release of your uh, first book, Walking Free, uh, Taking Small Steps to a Big God. I just I think I want to start first with like, when did you first have the vision to capture that in that form? Yeah, well, what's funny was is I, I actually didn't have the vision for it to be this form. The original plan was is to do like a seven-day version app kind of a thing because I've never done one of those before. So I actually had an idea for a kid's book with a buddy of mine, and I went to my management and I said, hey, I've got this idea for a kid's book. Um, and it, it was not a walking free book. It was a totally different concept. And I said, you know, I, said, but I have no idea how to go about writing a book. You know, I'm not really – I don't want to write like a big boy book. I just write this little kid's book and kind of thing. And so we ended up, uh, they said, we'll talk to a publisher about it. So they went and talked to a publisher. Um, and then all the, at the same time, I thought, well, I've never done a U version. Walking Free was on the radio at the time. And so reached out to management and I said, hey, also, can you find out for me how to do a U version seven-day thing? I have no idea how to do it. Let me know. So they said, well, what do you want to do? I said, well, I'm thinking like seven steps to Walking Free. It would be like a really easy way to do it. Um, well, all of a sudden, I'm coming in town. I live in Texas, so I was coming back into Nashville to go uh, hop on a tour bus, actually. They said, hey, can you come in a couple of hours early? Uh, we've got a publisher who wants to meet with you about the book. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is getting real. We're going to do this kid's book. <laughs> I walk into the meeting, and they hand me a paper saying, hey, we love the idea. Here's what we're kind of thinking. And it was this outline for a walking free book. <laughs> and I said, oh, I'm so confused. I, I, I thought we were going to do a, a, a kid's book, and they said, we like the idea for the kids, but, but, you know, the steps to walking free is a really good idea. Can you just, like, pray about that and think about it? So we had, like, a two-hour meeting, and during that meeting, as I'm talking about it, I'm going, like, oh, my gosh, God has really revealed a lot of things to me um, from my own mistakes of, of stepping in the wrong direction, um, has, has affirmed things in me from stepping in the right direction, have heard so many stories of people who were affected by the song. I was like... I kind of think that there's something here. And so I wouldn't be able to do it without Robert Nolan, who's the guy who I wrote the book with, who is a, an incredible author. He's written a ton of other um, books with artists and different um, people telling their stories. And so he just kind of held my hand through the whole process and really just said, like, hey, let's let's really get down to it. And so when, when it was time to write the book, it just kind of came in this overflow of what God's been doing in my life. And so uh, kind of stepping back and looking at it now, um, it's, it's, it's wild to me that it all came from – trying to get a seven day online, you know, kind of a challenge thing. So what's hilarious though, is that when the book was done, then the publisher goes, Hey, do you think you could do like a seven day U version app kind of thing? We're going to pull these things from the book uh, to kind of go along with the study. And I thought that was hilarious. Cause like I had to write a book to get this U version <laughs> thing going is because the U version thing, we wrote a book. So it's kind of a hand in hand situation. That's funny. So it's also curious to me because you, you have it titled off of your of one of your songs. As you mentioned, you were doing Walking Free at the time and that kind of how yeah. it spurned it. But I'm curious how this book kind of continued the story for you. Well, you know, in a, in a song, you have three and a half minutes to, to get everything across. OK, and, and here's the deal. I, I tell people all the time, a, a lot goes into three and a half minutes. A lot of time goes into three and a half minutes. But you're, you know, you're a little bit restricted. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm not. Uh, I get really jealous of the hip hop artists because a lot, a lot of my buddies who are in hip hop, they can go, they can put so many more words into a song. Like if you print out my lyric sheet next to KD or Lecrae or those guys, it's just they have a lot more ground they can cover. And so, you know, as this, when I get on stage, I'm constantly trying to find a way to set the set these songs up where I can tell a little bit more of the story. And so. When, when the song came out, it's what, what was crazy to me was that I heard so many stories from other people who the song met them. Um, I mean, I, I, I literally yesterday got a message from a mom saying, my son's been in prison. Um, he, he made some mistakes. He's been there right now, but he, I sent him this song and he's played it to himself every day. And it's been his prayer through this whole thing. And so I'm going, okay, so the concept of walking free is something that we're trying to North Star inside of a song. But now with a book, you really get to explore that space, stretch your legs a little bit and say, OK, when I say the line to the one walking wounded and to the one with regret, like it's the, the third verse has that line in there. Now I get to say, OK, so if I were to say that in three pages, 
What would that idea look like? And then we can really expand. So that, that's been very exciting for me because it really takes off a lot of the limitations that you have when you're trying to hit two verses, a, a couple of choruses and a melody. You know? Absolutely. I'm curious with that in mind, is there a passage or a section that you're like really looking forward to, to folks being able to, to read more of what you wanted to say um, in, within that book? Oh yeah. There, there's, there's a couple. Um, one that really gets me, uh, I, that I, I love, one of my favorite chapters of the book is talking about um, the, the concept of the sower and the seed. I think a lot of times, um, so, so just to lay out the book, so, so the idea is, is for six days, we focus each day is a step. So it's a step away from something and to something, away from control and into like a connection with God, away from fear and into a faith that, that will sustain us in those fearful moments and stuff. Um, and so then on the seventh day, we retrace our steps. We go back and we look at those last six days and go, okay, what sticks out to us? What was a hard step? What was an easy step? What was a bold step? What was a baby step? Like those kind of things. Mm-hmm. And so I love, uh, the, to me, the concept of the whole thing is very exciting because I think different steps are going to hit people in different ways. But one of my favorite passages, um, I was on a tour and a buddy of mine, Zane Black, was pre- preaching this message. And it just has affected me for the last year and a half. It's the idea of the sower and the seed. We've heard that story a ton where Jesus tells the story of there's a, a farmer who goes out and he's tossing seed out and the seed lands on, on the good soil and it goes in there and it takes root. And it becomes this plant, right? And then some land on the sidewalk and the birds pick it off. Some lands on this rocky ground. It kind of digs in a little bit and then it comes up and the roots get it or, or, or uh, the, the sun uh, burns it out. And then some falls into the weeds and the weeds choke it out and stuff. And I've heard that story a ton. And, and my, my idea was always talking about um, like you really got to protect that seed. That seed's very precious, and you've got to find a good soil for it. But what's crazy is is that this farmer, if you just macro, you pull all the way out and you think about this story, this guy's throwing seed everywhere. Like that would look insane for a farmer to be walking through Times Square in New York City, and he's just throwing seeds on the sidewalk, or for him to walk through a complete you know a, a, a desert, he's just throwing seeds out there. Some people would say that, that guy is reckless. But I think that if we look at it through the eyes of, of, of what we have as, as believers, that we have this gospel, right? He's not reckless. He's relentless. He wants to see something grow no matter the circumstance. Like it's not the, – the gospel does not return back void, right? So, so if we take a step away from trying to protect this seed and more into to pursue the gospel and what it can do, that it could pop up in the middle of Times Square and a plant could grow because that's the thing. That's what, about how we're walking away from being – reckless and into being relentless with the gospel of jesus so that's just an example for one day and so some people hear that and they'll go uh, hey i'm already doing that it's an affirmation for them like i just want to see the gospel grow somewhere and it really tells them like hey keep it up and some people are going like oh my gosh i'm constantly trying to hold on to the gospel and go it's not the right time this is not the perfect situation where the moment is set and someone asks me to explain to them who jesus is but it's, so then it's a challenge for them. So like I said, every step is going to be different for different people. But I also think that when we walk together, we walk a lot stronger. And so I'm hoping to build a community with this too. And I'm excited to see how we all kind of take these steps at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. I'm, I'm curious for you because writing song lyrics, writing a book, I'm sure there's similarities and there's differences. But kind of what did you learn about yourself through this, you know, creative process and this new journey for you? Yeah, it's a great question. I, I, you know, when it comes to a uh, when it comes to a song, you have to be very precise. Like there's there's you can't waste a word in a song if you if, if if you're really trying to be excellent at it, right? So so when I go into a uh, a session, I'm, instead of being able to really expound upon something and explain yourself, you're trying to find the most succinct. The most targeted, the most precise, you're really trying to thread the needle with a lyric because you're wanting it to be able to do more work um, than having to, like, I mean, I could write a 20 minute long song, but no one's going <laughs> to listen to it past three and a half minutes, probably. Um, but I will say this one thing that I did learn that I was, I, I, it was, it, it was really helpful for me is I, I've given myself two rules when I write music. And I've been doing this for the last 15 years of writing songs. Um, I have two self appointed rules that I abide by every single time. Rule number one, Every song that you ever hear from me um, has been sifted through scripture. It lines up with God's word because I don't want to offer something to someone 
that doesn't that, that because anything outside of what God's truth has already said is a lie. So so for me, I, I bring my songs to pastors. I send them over to friends of mine who know God's word and say, hey, I want to challenge me here. OK, if there's something that is sticking out to you that doesn't really line up, let me know. Um, and so that's rule number one. And rule number two, um, God gave me these eyes to see the world. God gave me these feet to walk its streets. And God's given me this heart to to love the things around me. So if, if my feet are carrying me places that my heart is trying to love people and my eyes are trying to see things, then God's given me a very specific point of view. So I, I try to make sure when, – like when I go back and listen to my music, I, I can't tell you what I ate for lunch that day. I can't tell you what I was wearing that day. I may not be able to tell you uh, the room that we wrote it in, but every time that I listen to one of my songs, it's like a little time capsule to where when I, I – it opens up my memory of what God was showing me on that day, what God was teaching me, what I was learning, what I was struggling with. You know, I really try to be vulnerable and honest, even if it's like a joyful, happy thing or, or, or that feeling of like, God, I want to be able to celebrate. I don't feel it today. So can I write a song of celebration? That I know one day I'll be able to understand and sing in full. You know what I'm saying? And so what was crazy was that all of a sudden when you're writing a book, the same rules can apply. So I'm trying to make sure that every single chapter that we write lines up with God's word. Mm-hmm. And I had, I was sending it over to friends. Um, Amy F. Downs, who wrote the foreword for the book. I'm mm-hmm. just a big, I'm a huge uh, AFD fan. Like, she's awesome, right? Um, she read the book through, and I was so encouraged. I did an interview with her yesterday, and, she, and I, I'm so glad she said, I would have told you if something didn't stick, if something stuck out that I didn't line up with you you know, theologically or whatever. She said, but I wrote the forward because I really agree. And my thing is, I'm not trying to find people to agree with me. I want to affirm that the scripture's been upheld, but also that people get to see things from the point of view that God's given to me. Um, but we also try to write it in a way where other people can put their feet into the shoes of the song or the shoes of the chapter, right? Mm-hmm. That they're able to, to stand in the same place and see the world from their point of view. Um, and, and, and that they're able to say, God, what are you showing me with my heart right now? What, what is my heart to feel? Because it's the same at the end of the day. Scripture is all the same for all of us, but our experience can be a little different as we walk this world. So that's that, that was kind of what I learned through the book is like book songs and chapters really can kind of uh, have a lot of parallels to them. Um, but it is way harder to write chapters. <laughs> it's, it's, I can sit in a room for three hours and write a song. Goodness gracious, we we really uh, put in the hours trying to type out these words for this thing. But at the same time, all work. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, and another recent announcement for you um, is that uh, next spring you're going to be on tour with Mercy Me um, as one of their special yeah. guests with Taya. I'm sure you're excited about that. Um, and it, I, I know it's I know it's a couple months away at this point, but I'm sure you're already starting to think about what you want to be sharing those nights and kind of like what your portion is. So can you just take me through a little bit of what you're thinking through with those nights so far? Yeah. Well, well, what's really exciting is, is that, so, so uh, as I'm doing this interview with you right now, um, yesterday was my last like work day. Okay. Okay. So like I'm kind of off for the next month, which praise the Lord, because it's been a, it's been a crazy year. We, we did a headline tour this past year. We wrote the book and and I also wrote a new album. And so uh, it's just been like on top of just traveling and doing shows We've had a lot of all the free time quote, quote, that I had has been really – I'm writing a book called Walking Free, but I've been kind of locked up with a lot of responsibility, <laughs> right? But we get to kind of see um, our, how our labor is kind of like what the fruit of our labors are this, this coming spring because January is when the book comes out. So I'm fired up about telling people about that and explaining and like really kind of seeing what these chapters are going to do in the lives of other people. February, um, the new album comes out. we got an EP coming out with six songs. We just wanted to like make – what are the six best ones we got? And like, let's go for it with these six songs. And then, yeah, March is whenever we head out with Taya and Mercy Me. And so for me, I, I, I've got to like, I'm I'm having to do a little bit of self-editing right now because <laughs> because I'm going like, I have so much I want to share with people, but I have 30 minutes on stage. <laughs> so I can't go through and sing one song and, and also read a chapter and tell them about all these. I, I got to really do a little more, just kind of retreat a little bit and go, okay, God, Help me edit myself down a little bit more to get this. But yeah, it's just it's it's been a really it's been a tough, exciting, vulnerable, and beautiful uh, season that we've kind of walked through this past year. And so yeah, we kind of get to go out there and just now like run the race, like actually get to kind of see what all this hard work's kind of done. And so yeah, I, I 
I, as much as I'm excited about sharing things, I've got to figure out a way to get a cut back. I got to get out of chapter talking and I got to get back into music talking when this, when the spring tour comes back up. Oh, for sure. I'm curious with the new album, the EP you said for February, I'm sure you can't spoil too much here, but can, can you just share how it stands out for you differently or what stands out for you from that, from your other projects? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's like I said, I, I honestly, I look at these six songs and, and every single one of them, um, they've been a time capsule of the last year and a half of writing this album. Like we really have, cause, cause the, the first, when I put out the different album, that was my first studio release. Mm-hmm. Um, or my first, my first label release when I signed a deal. So that was five years ago. Um, there's just a lot of songs about, about God's faithfulness on that album. So when I sing never but a moment, that's because, you know, back 12 years ago when God called me to step out of the youth pastor for nine years, God called me to step out of youth ministry and, and, and to step into music. And it wasn't because we had a tour bus picking us up or a record label giving us a deal. We just felt this call and be faithful. So we sold over half of what we owned. We bought a single wide mobile home trailer. We put it on borrowed land. My wife and I and our two kids at the time, our third one has, was, was about to be on the way. We didn't know. Um, and that was one of the most difficult seasons of just like trusting God. But I, I signed my, my label deal. And the first day that I signed a deal, we wrote the song, Never Been a Moment, talking about God's faithfulness, right? The song Different came out of me looking back and going, like, God, I, 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 everything's changing around me, but I know that if all the all around me changes, but I don't, then I'm going to be left behind because I, I want you to change me as we're walking through this thing. So I go back and look at those albums. I can tell you the time castles there. With this album, um, there's, there's a song on there. It's a love song for my wife. There's a song on there that talks about how I, so many times I look back and I see – um, the mistakes that I've made, and for the longest time, I would see the shame and the hurt that went along with those mistakes. Mm-hmm. But now, I, I look back and I see the grace of God because I've learned that the closer I walk with Jesus, the more I get to see things from His point of view. Um, there's a song called "People Like Us." That I, I travel this world all the time. I got shut down for a year because of COVID, and one of the things that I missed the most was actually getting to go and just see people. Like I love my people. Like I love my mm-hmm. wife and three kids, and we have to see each other a, a lot. They may say too much for me. I don't know. I liked it all. I could have stayed home the whole time, but they were, it was like, maybe you should do some shows at some point. But whenever, but, but the thing is, I, I learned that no matter where I go, I've been to this, just in the past six months, I've been to Rome. I've been to Romania. I've been to the East coast. I've been to the West coast. I've been to the South and I've been all the way up to the North and Canada. I've been everywhere, everywhere I go. I learned that if God can love someone like me, he can love anybody. And so I, I get to the, the gospel is worth throwing a seat out to any of these people. And so, like I said, this album really, it's, it's, it's very much the same where it's like, Hey, you're going to hear my voice on an idea that really follows those two rules. Um, but it is this, my, my brother's on his third battle with cancer right now. So like there, there are some vulnerability in this thing talking about like, man, God, if, if I'm broken this much, is that too far? Um, and there's, there's, there's a song called nothing too broken where we, we kind of affirm what the scripture says about how God's like, my arm is not too short to reach. My voice is not too faint to cry out. So, yeah, it's a very long answer. Um, it's 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 still playing by the same rules, but you know, I'm just I'm writing it now from the last year and a half's perspective of where God's got me on the journey. That's awesome. I can't wait to hear those too. But that's great. I also yeah. know um, we're cutting close on time, so I'll wrap with one final question for you. But looking to next year, you have. <laughs> as you mentioned, many exciting things coming up, um, all big things too, but what are you most expectant for either professionally or personally for what 2023 is going to hold for you? That's a great question. Um, you know, I, it's, it's what, what's crazy is the next month I'm going to be able to, I, I can answer that question a lot better in the next couple of weeks. Cause I'm, I'm literally yesterday. I, I flew into Nashville, did some interviews, worked on some things, finished up the new album and then I flew home last night. So I'm, I'm kind of on this, like, you know, my body's still going like, okay, we got to wrap things up. We're going to finish things up. We're at the finish line with the book and all that kind of stuff. And so, um, at the, at the beginning of 2022, um, my wife and I, I've never been one of those guys who just like says, Hey, what's our word for the year? You know, kind of thing. But for the, for the first time back in 2020, God really put the, the, the word rest on my heart. And I was like, rest. Uh, and this, I was about to have a new album coming out in 2020. I had, I was about to go on tour with 10th Avenue North. We were about to be hitting hard and running and gunning. And so I thought, rest, what is rest? Well, then the world shut down. And so I really had to learn how to be still and know that he's God. 2022, we, we had the word, uh, I, the word healthy. I just I, I thought I want to focus on health this year, mental health, um, spiritual health, physical health. So, um, I lost 75 pounds this year. 
Um, we, 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 we tried to make sure that we spent really good quality time as a family. And really, if we're going to sacrifice as a family, we're going to celebrate as a family. And so honestly, that my, my goal for the next couple of weeks is to go like, okay, God, 2023, I, it, we, I, I can, I mean, we have, I want, I'm excited about playing shows. I'm excited about releasing a book. I'm excited about putting new music out and seeing how these songs affect people and how these chapters affect people. And we've got all these plans, but I've kind of learned to be like, all right, God, I'm going to be still. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to try and, and really like ask you what the next year is going to be. And so, yeah, that's a very long way of saying, I don't know. I, 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 we've got all kinds of things on the calendar right now, but as far as like what I'm expected to do, my expectation is, or what my hope is, is that we will never stand before Jesus and him say, well done, that good and successful author. Well done, that good and chart topping Christian music artist. It's faithful serving. So my goal every day is, God, can you can you show me ways that I can be faithful to the things that you put in front of me today? So my expectancy is like, I'm going to try and be that faithful servant. I'm saying like, God, whatever's in front of me, let's do it. And so if it's releasing a book or if it's ministering to somebody at a merch table, if it's spending time with my kids and celebrating their birthdays, if it's going to a school recital because I'm off that day, I'm so pumped about it, then that's what it's going to be. But uh, yeah, uh, that, that's a very long way of me going like, I don't know, but I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, no, sometimes though, that, that that's an okay answer too, though, um, as yeah. well. So no, I just wanted to thank you again, Micah, for taking the time. I really enjoyed uh, getting to hear more of your heart behind uh, all of oh, the exciting Jesse, stuff thanks. you have up. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. I, I Christian Beat's always been so good about like just partnering up with. So I, I appreciate you guys letting me come on and just, you know, talk, talk about everything we got going on over here. It's been fun. Absolutely. Our pleasure.